Not really sure what's going on on this one. Maybe she got threatened by the bird? I'm not sure. Maybe she's just mocking the bird? Man, some of the wildlife of these ramps, the abuse they take. Welcome back, guys, to the greatest show on Earth, and that is the Miami Boat Ramps channel. And if you can't tell, we are on a little bit of a field trip today, and we are visiting Sarasota. So Wifey's here giving about all the legs she's got to try and get this boat pushed over toward her husband, but she just doesn't have enough legs. She's just not quite tall enough to get it there. Husband's like, give me a little bit more, just get it over here. And it's a little bit of a chilly day here in Sarasota, so that's why the husband's not really eager to get in the water, I believe. But I mean, you're wet now, go get this boat, bro. I mean, it's still all smiles and fun and game right now, but he's going to get frustrated here shortly. Ah, oh, here we go. She's going to give one more push. And it's just not getting there, and husband is now not satisfied. Uh-oh, we need a better microphone to hear what he's yelling about. Oh, he's disappointed now. But you can't get mad at other people at the ramp for this stuff. I mean, once again, he's already wet in the water. Just reach out there and grab this boat and put it on the trailer, my man. He's causing more headache here than this needs to be. And finally, he's got it. And that's the toss of disgust from the girls. They are done. They're like, you do it. We've got a trailer cowboy here. This one's a little different. You know, I've seen all kinds of things with all of our haulover images, and we've got some haulover cowboys and some various other things we've seen, but uh, this is, seems like a pretty stupid idea. Not even going to sh sugarcoat it. I mean, the reality here is if he slips and falls, then he's getting run over by a truck or by a trailer. This is just not a good idea. I don't know what made him think it was. And basically, judging by the way his counterpart's backing this down here at the beginning, I'm saying it's even a worse idea, because that counterpart's going to have to pay every bit of attention they can just to get this thing back down there, let alone notice if my man falls off this trailer. I mean, hell, this is a 79th Street wobble at its best, even though we're here in Sarasota. I mean, we've got the whole ramp block now. We're going to go ahead and reset. And the jet ski crew over here to the left actually look like they're first time jet skiers too. I mean, my man over here on the jet ski is actually wearing jeans. Once again, it's a cold day, I understand, but it's just not the best uh, ensemble to be out on a jet ski on. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure some of you will light it up in the comments and say you do this up in Wisconsin, but we're in Sarasota, Florida, and <laughs> jeans on a jet ski is not a common thing. And Chick's like, yep, let me get this jet ski out of here because obviously this boater doesn't know what he's doing as he's about to back into them. We've still got our guys standing on the trailer. Once again, just a terrible spot to be. And we've got this in the water. It's not been a perfect launch, but they're there, and nobody got injured. And something, oh, something stopped him in his tracks. There must be some kind of wildlife or something over there. We can't get an angle from over here to see what it is. Maybe whatever it is will come out. But whatever it is, it was enough to make this guy stop and be like, yo, what's up with this thing? Well, now he's reaching down to pet it, so it must not be anything dangerous, at least. And so we see why our guy was on the trailer. It's because he planned to get in the boat, but it was still a stupid spot. He could have easily got out of the truck and done that at any point in time. Now he's telling the truck to go ahead and continue to back up. I'm just assuming by him... Having been at the front of this trailer, he's already loosened the bow eye, but I don't see any lines out or anybody in the dock to try and catch him. So we finally got some lines out, and we've got the first toss and a miss, and if you can't tell, we're already drifting off the trailer. Second toss, and we got it on the second round. But man, that was uh, playing with fire a little bit here. They didn't have a motor going, they didn't really have any lines out, and just started drifting off the trailer, but... This crew doesn't seem to have it all that much together, but in the end, they're going to make it onto the dock safely, it appears. And now we've got a motor started, and everything should be golden from here, probably. And here we've got that wifey-husband combo trying to get this pontoon loaded onto the trailer. Um, things just look a little off from here. I'm not 100% sure what it is yet, but i got a feeling as he starts to pull the truck forward, we'll get a better picture. But honestly, even our captain that was down there kind of had a couple minutes looking at this before he walked back to the truck, because I think he felt like something was off as well. Um, once again, as soon as he pulls this up, I'm sure we'll get a much better idea. It's either going to land straight or something's going to be off. And yep, something's off. As you can see, there's actually a gap here between the bunks and the rear of the pontoon, so somewhere along the line here, something is kind of off. Now, typically what we would see in this situation is you're going to just back this down and try and reset it. But it looks like our captain's put the vehicle in park. So let's see what he's got in mind here. 
notices the issue and it's obviously something's just not centered right oh he's gonna go with the he-man approach this never seems to work though oh this is the first in miami boat ramps history i think our guy and his wife just sitting here pushing the boat actually centered it back onto the trailer. I have seen this done probably 50 times now. And typically it ends with frustration and tears on the ramp as they have to re-back this thing down the ramp and get it centered. But somehow this couple pulled it off and actually made it work. This is the first. Congratulations, guys. Got a little bit of a wind, as you can tell from the flag here. Pushing these guys into the docks and they're coming a little hot. Oh, a little nudge. But that's what the rub rail's there for. And this is an interesting technique here. So we put the boat in reverse. So basically he's just using the rub rail holding against the uh, pylon. Kind of at an angle to keep the boat there it appears. Um, it's definitely an interesting approach to this. Definitely one way to go ahead and scuff up your rub rail pretty good. But his other crewmate doesn't seem to have any desire to be assisting in this either. He's just kind of got his head buried. I don't know if he's trying to dig out lines. Once again, that's kind of like a Florida tradition right now, is nobody pulls up to the dock with lines ready. We wait until after we've already hit the dock or hit something to go ahead and get those pulled out. But uh, I mean, this crew, at least we've got a we got a grab for the pull now, so we're on. But I still don't see any lines out or anybody even reaching for lines anymore now that this gentleman's actually holding on to the pole. Oh, Captain's just going to leave him anyway. Cap's going to be like, yep, figure it out, pal. You, you can just hold this the whole time. Here comes our guy who's out there enjoying a day on the water with his dog in the boat. And this dog's pretty calm considering there's other people on the other side. Most dogs I've ever had would be going nuts right now at those other people. So here he comes approaching the dock. And we're going to do the little dock hit. Maybe that's the signal to the dog. As soon as he hits the dock, the dog starts running up. Or maybe the dog was just smart enough to know that he didn't need to be in the bow of this boat because his captain was likely going to hit the dock. And uh, he was in a much safer spot where he was. These guys need our He-Man pontoon crew from earlier. As this is about the fifth attempt now to try and center this boat on the trailer. Right now it's just been a continuous roll of them backing down the ramp. Letting the boat float for a few seconds. And then pulling forward and the boat's still being crooked. You'd figure they're going to have to give us something at some point. I mean, maybe they need to release a little bit of line out of the bow roller. I I'm just not 100% sure. Maybe the person who's on the boat needs to get off the boat and pull it over to the right spot on the trailer. But for the moment, we're going to just be satisfied with going up and down the ramp and not liking where the boat sits. Oh, we're still crooked, though, for sure. But that's the furthest I've seen them pull it up. So we've gotten the boat completely out of the water. Maybe this will help with the reset. Bring it back down again. And did we get it? Oh, this time we did it appears. Yep. So that's all we needed to do is get that boat completely out of the water and then really just start from scratch. And they're going to be out of here. And so are we. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this field trip over to Sarasota. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to check out our other channels. We have Wavy Boats, who gets us a bunch of great content down there at Hallover Inlet. My channel, Broncos Guru, we do some great comedy boating videos over there as well. And our other channel, Boats vs. Hallover, where Man and Machine take on Mother Nature down at Hallover Inlet, Miami, Florida. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here. Also, if you guys know of any cool boat ramps we should check out, go ahead and light it up and leave it in the comments section below. If you can't tell, we've traveled a little bit already this year and are hitting boat ramps that you guys have suggested and plan to keep on doing that as well as the Miami ramps.